Hey everyone, Mr. Sujano here. In this video, we're talking about Razor, Pokemon, Mezen, ROM hacks, and more. Let's get started. All right, we'll kick things off here with some arguably pretty controversial news. We're talking about Razor and the newly released Razor's Edge. And apparently here, Razer has been accused of fraud for the Wi-Fi version of this handheld. The retro tech dad on Twitter says, Razer, it looks like the Razer's Edge Wi-Fi is shipping with six gigabytes of RAM. However, the product page had it listed with eight gigs of RAM and it was just updated moments ago to reflect six gigabytes. What is going on here? So obviously after reading that tweet, I had to ask, wait, is this happening after purchasing? I mean, if Razer listed the device with 8 gigs of RAM and delivered it to people with 6 gigs of RAM, that is a little bit misleading, to say the least. The Retro Tech Dad says, yes, they changed the spec page just a few hours ago. It had 8 gigs of RAM listed in their specs since October of 2022. The product purchase page just got updated as well. This was done after units were sold, shipped, and delivered, including mine. And Rensho says, yes, handhelds started arriving yesterday. Reservations have been going for weeks. Product page wasn't updated until this evening. Purchase page even later after that. To me, that's absolutely unacceptable. A lot of people seem to have purchased these units expecting 8 gigs of RAM and receiving 6 gigs of RAM. Now, some people might say, maybe you just read the product specs page wrong and you ordered the wrong product. But no, the Retro Tech Dad has provided receipts. And take a look at these specs. Here is the before. You can see the Razor's Edge Wi-Fi listed with 8 gigs of LPDDR5 memory. Here is the after, the recently updated, and it's got six gigs of LPDDR5 memory. I guess we'll have to wait to see what Razer does to rectify this situation. I mean, even if this was just an initial typo, they sold and shipped things with this typo on the website. They actively misled customers even if they didn't mean to. Let me know what you think about this entire situation in the comments below. I'm curious to see what everyone has to say here. I like Razer and this is really disheartening if true. But moving on here and next up, we're talking about something far more positive, Mezen 2. Yes, Sour is back. Yes, Mezen 2 is a thing. And yes, this is huge. So Mezen 2.0.0 Preview 1 has just released on GitHub. I'll drop a link in the description below. It's free, it's open source, and I recommend checking it out. It's available for Linux and Windows here, and you might encounter some bugs considering it is just a first preview. On top of that, they do say that the save states, movies, settings, and possibly more might not be compatible with subsequent versions. You've got no idea. Actually, you've got a huge idea now how excited I am to see Sour back up and at it with emulation. This is massive for the community. Mezen 2 is compatible with NES, SNES, Game Boy, and PC Engine, and Mezen was extremely accurate. I'm expecting the same from Mezen 2, or at least hoping the same here. Sour's an amazing developer. And speaking about accuracy, next up here we're talking about N64 emulation with Simple64. And Simple64 just got a small but brand new update. Simple64 is free, it's open source, it's available on GitHub, and I'll drop a link to it in the description below. Feel free to check it out. Simple64 might have gotten just a little bit more accurate here with the first release of 2023. They say here, Rasky's System Bench ROM recently added tests for serial interface timings. They've updated Simple64 to try and match those timings. On top of that, taking a look at their GitHub here, I said it was their first release of this year and it turns out it's their second. They had one on January 1st that I might have missed. It was a bug fix. Next up here, and this one's also crazy. Apparently the League of Legends source code and Teamfight Tactics source code has been stolen. The hackers are ransoming it to Riot Games and Riot Games are not willing to pay. I'm really curious to see what happens here if the hackers will actually release the source code for League of Legends and Teamfight Tactics. But moving on from that, next up we're talking about Emu Deck. If you're currently using Emu Deck and you've used the auto updater, you might have a broken updater and you might need to manually update it. This is more of a PSA than anything, but they do say today GitHub broke our app updater and a lot of other people's apps making the app go into a loop on launch. It's already been fixed on our end, but since the updater is broken at the moment, you'll need to re-download the app from www.emudeck.com. Your games and configurations will be safe. 
or just wait until GitHub restores the broken functionality. Sorry for the inconvenience. Next up, we're talking about Wii U emulation with CMU. And before you get too excited here, no, we're not talking about CMU on Android. As far as I know, CMU is not currently in development on Android, at least not publicly. But CMU on PC is, and it just got a brand new update. It's called CMU 2.0-26. It is considered experimental, but at the same time here, it's far more recent than their latest stable version. And this one does have some bug fixes and might have some performance improvements for you. CMU is free. It's open source. It's available on GitHub and right from their website. If you hit the download tab from their website, scroll to the bottom here where you see download latest experimental version. 2.0 is a far cry from version 1.26. Moving on and we're talking about Pokemon. And apparently here on January 14th, Pokemon Dream World for generation 5 was shut down. Shutterbug appears to be trying to recreate this and bring it back to life. If you've ever played Dreamworld and you still have the hard drive that you played Dreamworld on, you might be able to help out with the project. They're currently asking for a whole bunch of help here and I'll drop a link to this site in the description below. Next up, we're talking about Castlevania and it appears that Castlevania Chronicles 2 Simon's Quest has released. This game is a remake of Castlevania II Simon's Quest for the NES with a whole bunch of brand new features. The soundtrack on this game has been remixed. There's no more save and load passwords. It's all save points scattered within the game. And on top of that, there are some brand new weapons. If you are curious about this one, I'll drop a link to the YouTube trailer in the description below and feel free to check it out. And last up here, we're talking about a ROM hack, Final Fantasy VI, A Soldier's Contingency. This one is available at romhacking.net. It's a ROM hack of Final Fantasy 3 and it adds in a whole bunch of brand new stuff. I mean, there's approximately 200 new monster sprites for a total of about 350 overall, which is massive. 50 plus new battle themes, new spells, new dialogue, new plot. You might want to check this one out. I'll drop a link to it in the description below. But anyways, that is all I've got for you in this one. Straight to the point, all stuff and no fluff. We talked about a bunch today. Let me know your thoughts about absolutely any of it in the comments below. If you like this video, leave a like. If you didn't like this video, leave a like. Hit that subscribe button. Check out my other videos. Don't tempt fate. Save your state.